Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 8th Atmos Script 6 tutorial and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the improvements to object literals in ES6. Alright then dogs. so basically ES6 gives us a cleaner way to define properties and methods on our objects should you want to use it. So let's go through an example. First of all, I'm going to create a variable which is going to store an object. And this object is going to be called Ninja. I'll set this equal to a blank object at the minute. Nothing going in there yet. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, then I want to create two more variables. And the first one is going to be called Name. And I'm going to set this equal to the name of the Ninja, which we're going to use in a second. It's going to be Crystal for now. And then the second variable is going to be called Belt. And I'm going to set that equal to a color, which is going to be black in this case. All right, so say we wanted to add a couple of properties to this ninja, and those two properties were name and belt, and we wanted them to equal these values right here, which we've defined above in these variables. Well, in ES5, we'd do something like this, right? We'd say name, and then set it equal to name, which is this variable. Then we'd say belt, and set it equal to belt, which is this variable. So it's going to create these kind of key value pairs. This is the property name, and this is the value of that property which we're grabbing from these variables. So now if we logged something like this to the console, it would look something like this, console.log, then I'd grab the ninja object, dot, say, name. If we log that to the console now, it's just gonna go ahead and grab crystal, okay? Because that's what's stored in this variable. Now, in ES6, we don't need to explicitly define these kind of key value pairs. We just have to pass through the uh, the key, if you like, which is the name of these variables, and it's going to go and grab the value for it. So I could just do something like this instead. Okay, so we've got a name and a belt, like that. And now we don't need to define the value of each one because it's going to be implied by grabbing the value from these variables when it looks them up. Okay, so now if I do something like this, ninja.name and log it to the console, it's going to do exactly the same thing. And I can do the same with belt, ninja.belt, and it should give us black. Pretty cool, right? So we can also kind of clean the way up, uh, clean the way we define our methods on these objects as well. So let's first of all define a method the way we would do it on, or rather in ES6. I'm going to create a method called chop, and this is just going to be used to karate chop our enemies. So we're going to set it equal to a function, which is going to take a parameter x, and that's just going to be the number of times that we're going to karate chop our enemy. So right now, let's log some kind of message to the console. I'm going to say console.log, and then we're going to use a template string, so we'll use those back ticks, and then I'm going to say you chopped the enemy, and then we need to grab that variable using this little syntax right here. Um, and then pop the X in and say times. So whatever value we pass in here is going to be output there in this kind of string. And uh, it's going to log that to the console. So let's just uh, come down here and say ninja.chop and pass through 5 as the parameter of X. Refresh and it says you chop the enemy five times. Cool. Okay, so how would we improve this using ES6? Well, we don't need all of this stuff here. We don't need the function keyword and we don't need this little colon right here as well. We just define the name of the function like that and then the brackets with any kind of parameters within it. So now when I save and refresh, it does exactly the same thing. So we can just neaten it up a little bit using this kind of syntax in ES6. Okay, not exactly groundbreaking stuff, but it's there for you if you want to use it and is a little bit of a time saver. So there we go, guys. That is how we can um, improve object literal notation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, do not forget to share, subscribe and like these videos. And I'm going to see you in the very next one.